go ahead and take you through to today's stories, starting with, well, we have to start out with Hurricane Milton. Now, it's kind of interesting because, well, didn't it make landfall, you know, uh, last week? Yes, it did. Uh, but uh, there has been a tremendous amount of damage actually done, obviously, to the, the state, which is, you know, I mean, that, that goes without saying. But actually, in the Central Florida region itself, specifically with Walt Disney World, more than I had expected, and that's why we're covering it here today. I go ahead and get this on screen right here. This is from Mickey Views. Braden is excellent over there at Mickey Views, just doing tremendous stuff with both the site, the Twitter handle, and also the YouTube channel. Disney World Resort Hotels damaged due to Hurricane Milton. Walt Disney World Resort theme parks and Disney Springs are closed today as Disney assesses damage from Hurricane Milton. The Category 2 hurricane passed within just 30 miles uh, south-southwest of Walt Disney World during the 1 a.m. hour last night. Winds on the backside of the storm over the following hour uh, produced winds uh, with gusts of 86 miles per hour in the Walt Disney World area, higher than anything recorded during Irma or even Ian. With the sun rising over Florida, Walt Disney World personnel are on site mitigating overnight effects from the storm. Walt Disney World plans to reopen its parks tomorrow, and indeed they did. Uh, and they have been getting back to normal operations slowly but surely, which is uh, pretty good there. You can see, you can see though, the, uh, the resort wasn't unscathed. And that's kind of what surprises me the most about all this is just how, how much damage was actually done to uh, not just uh, uh, in various areas around Walt Disney World, but Walt Disney World properties themselves. Also, how much, how many trees actually went down? And Mickey Views has done a, a pretty good job at cataloging as many photos as possible. You can actually see right there the Grand Flow, which recently had its uh, had its roof redone as part of a big refurbishment project that's been taking place with the Grand Flow reading. It's lasted, I want to say, uh, the last couple of years, and uh, they did do a, a number of of, of different refurbishments and rehabs to the roof structure, the roof line, all of that. But unfortunately, uh, it hasn't been contending as well as uh, I think Walt Disney World would have thought. You can also see here, Caribbean Beach Resort, whole side of the facade ripped off. I mean, that's pretty extraordinary. I've not seen that before associated with uh, hurricane damage and Walt Disney World. So it's definitely notable here. You can see some light posts. Oh, man. You know, the, the, the tough thing about something like that is that was probably like a custom fixture right there. Walt Disney World Resort probably spent a tremendous amount of money actually putting that up originally. So to see that knocked down, that is a, a real shame there. This here uh, looks to be at the Swan. Down trees uh, on the side there. Uh, all over Walt Disney World property, you're seeing damage. Obviously some dirt and some ponds and so forth. Again, more down trees and and all of that. Uh, if we go along here, this wasn't just uh, limited to the Walt Disney World Resort as a whole, like the uh, resort properties, but actually damage actually occurred within the parks themselves. You can see some some shingles here that have been that have been upturned and damaged uh, on the Main Street facades. There, uh, it looks at like the end of Main Street. Tough, tough stuff. Um, not good. Not good at all. Also, too, the Tree of Liberty. Talking about down trees, the Tree of Liberty over there in Liberty Square on the west side of Magic Kingdom was also damaged, which is a real shame. Still standing, but you can see right there this, uh, I believe, I don't even know what the exact age of the Tree of Liberty is because it was an old growth tree when it was transplanted and installed for the opening of uh, Magic Kingdom back in October 1st of 1971. So I don't even know how old it is, but I would I would think it's around 60 years old, if not older. You can just see just how much damage was actually done. My goodness gracious, not good. We also have some stuff that maybe you hadn't seen before online. These pictures were actually sent to us um, on Thursday, but we couldn't incorporate them into that park place. I'm showing you here. You can see this is the <laughs> Animal Kingdom Lodge. Sorry, it just came to me. Animal Kingdom Lodge here all along those pathways next to the savannah. You can see right there um, starts out, you know, not so bad. And it gets a little worse, obviously, with just how large the trees that were actually downed. And it gets real bad here with the pavement and the asphalt actually being upended there. Not good. Uh, that's going to take a 
a lot of work in order to uh, in, in order to make right and you could just see just the roots the whole root structure was upended and and uh major major winds affecting all of walt disney world resort property a lot a lot more down trees everything like that uh not so good also to celebration near walt disney world also experiencing a lot of damage remember this was it was part of Walt Disney World property until it was annexed when the Walt Disney Company looked at this and said, you know what, we don't actually want to uh, incorporate <laughs> uh, celebration into Walt Disney World. You know, with the Rudy Creek Improvement District, uh, you know, I don't know if we should be uh, creating a city of tomorrow that would empower the residents of said city with voting rights over how <laughs> Walt Disney World uh, actually conducts its own business. So that was sold off annex from Walt Disney World property, but you can just see just how devastating some of this stuff is. Not so good there. And look, I mean, this is tough stuff, as, as you can probably uh, surmise. I believe Bazinga has an estimate, and this is even before this damage was actually cataloged, uh, following the storm making landfall there in the Central Florida region. Disney faces $150 to $200 million blow from Hurricane Milton, a tendency to drop 6% since Goldman Sachs. Uh, and this article actually was published soon after that. Disney lost $547 million to hurricanes. Here's the calculation. This in the business journal here. This is talking about hurricanes. For the entire span of time that Walt Disney World has been around, so for some uh, 50 years or so, and then you can add on this to that, because I don't think it's actually reflected in that official estimate right there, and uh, not, not good, but you know what is also not good about this story? Disney has been experiencing some heat lately over how they've conducted themselves in terms of their their the optics, let's say. And that's the thing, too, that's been affected uh, here um, when, when you look at the uh, when you look at the hurricane. It's not just the damages to property itself, but it's also to the reputation. You can see right here, if you do a Google search for, you know, Comcast donates hurricane, you can see a list of uh, uh, of, of donations that Comcast has actually made to Hurricane Milton, I believe Hurricane Helene as well. Looking to uh, looking uh, to to uh, um, donate anything they can towards the recovery efforts of uh, people that have been affected by these hurricanes, and it's great, it's awesome. You can see this right here. PR News Wire: Com uh, Comcast opens 261,000 free Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots across Florida ahead of Hurricane Milton's arrival. That way, uh, the company ensures that as many people as possible stay connected. Fair enough. That's all good. That's all great. I love that. Then you look at Disney and you just type in Disney donates to Hurricane. And you can see right here, a Taylor Swift there for some reason. Not sure what's going on there. But the last time they donated to any hurricane whatsoever, at least according to these results, was back in 2019. Um, with, uh, let's see, Hurricane Dorian. Nothing really in the news there about Disney donating anything towards hurricane relief efforts across the state that's that's a weird thing and also to the, the the bad news doesn't uh doesn't stop there you can see right here from the independent disney resort faces backlash after charging guests stranded by hurricane milton for sandwich kits indeed instead of setting up wi-fi hotspots like uh, comcast did with xfinity i understand i either an isp so they have the infrastructure to do that uh oh, Outside of, I don't know, giving rooms away or something like that, uh, there were a number of things that they possibly could have done to mitigate um, the effects of Milton on the residents in Central Florida. Instead of doing all that, they decided, well, we're just going to go ahead and charge for these sandwich kits. And these sandwich kits are composed of one jar of, of peanut butter, one jar of jelly, and I think uh, a loaf of bread uh, as well. And uh, how much is that? Well, it's $10. $10 for people staying on Walt Disney World Resort property. It's not to say that Disney didn't do anything for the hurricane. Uh, they did actually uh, waive some cancellation fees uh, associated with canceling your resort stay. Let's say if you were like in the like uh, if you were one to stay on property and uh, perhaps your vacation was going to be impacted by uh, Hurricane Milton in some way, or maybe you couldn't get down there because of, you know, the, the airport entirely closing. Hey, 
great stuff. You can actually go ahead and, and cancel your Walt Disney World vacation within a period of time that was tighter than the, I think, I, within the 24, 48 hour period, something like that, where you would incur a cancellation fee. They're going to waive that fee. All good stuff. But, um, you know, charging for sandwich kits, not actually donating towards any um, uh, donating any of your capital or efforts towards hurricane relief. Not so good. But you know what is good? Well, it's Lou Wasserman's ghost. What is going on, good sir? Well, you know, it's funny. I just came from them other guys, and they were getting to the $50 cake issue or whatever at that cake bake place. Yes. I I think their peanut butter and jelly sandwich was like $18. So this is (laughs) price. It's a deal. Your own bread, I guess, right? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Well, you get a limited time bonus and a special price. Wow. (laughs) You know... (laughs) You know, the generosity of this company never ceases to amaze me. That's because it never amazes me. (laughs) (laughs) It is so true. And I just wonder, like, you couldn't give away these things for free. Now, I know they've done this in the past where they've charged for these sandwich bags. So this isn't necessarily a new phenomenon. But Milton was supposed to be a, I mean, I mean, it was a pretty bad hurricane. There was a lot of uh, to, to do about it. And a lot of people impacted, a lot of people taking up shelter and residence at Walt Disney World, a lot of companies donating uh, potentially hundreds of millions of dollars towards hurricane relief efforts. You couldn't throw one in. I'm just surprised. Well, and and let's wait. You know, we joke about these silly prices and all the rest of it. But let's point out that if Disney was the kind of place that you and I woke up this morning and said, what are we doing this weekend? Well, I don't know. Well, you want to go to Disney? Sure, let's go. It would be forgivable, maybe. But the fact that the victims of this particular tiny little piece of the whole hurricane picture are not doing something stupid like, I'm going to ride out the storm in my underwear, or not building a house in a place known to blow houses down. They're just plain people. But because it's Disney, they have to have made these plans months and even years in advance in order to get in certain dates and whatever. And they find out, whoops. Mother Nature didn't read my itinerary and decided to screw it up. It's not your fault. It's not Disney's fault that they built this place in a highly hurricane-prone area. It's just life. But the idea that, well, this huge upheaval to this $10,000 family vacation or more, you know how we're going to help? We're going to give you a sandwich (laughs) for only... X number of dollars, not Only even give $10. you. dollars And then we will try and tell you, hey, it's a special deal we're doing. <laughs> we are. I mean, just the sheer arrogance of that. It's it's ridiculous. Well, you know what? Give me the um, sandwich. Don't tell me what a great deal it is. You know, I mean, I, I, I appreciate the sandwich. I'll eat a good PB. I, in fact, you may not know this. Ooh. In fact, I'm sure you don't. Once mm-hmm. upon a time, mm-hmm. I was the co-owner and creator of a thing called the PBJ of the Month Club, where every <laughs> month we sent you a different jar of peanut butter and a dar- jar of jelly that were special or unique or different. It was very popular. Uh, a big magazine. I can't think of the name of it now. Simple. What's it? Simple. Uh, they picked us as one of their number one Christmas gifts. So I, I, I bow to nobody over the delights of peanut butter and jelly. But... At a special bonus hurricane price. <laughs> um, Wild. What you know that old expression? Don't don't uh, uh, blow in my ear and tell me that it's raining or whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> some variation on that. that it is a variation. That, like, yeah. well, yeah. that's what this is: life imitating art or something like that, right? <laughs> well, you know how you know how life inter- imitates art, uh, uh, Lou, and I'm so glad you brought this up. Here's the sign that they hung up. Um, let's oh, see. Wow. This is from July 1st, 2024 for Gianna's Bite Adventure. Isn't it great? It's bright. It's colorful. It's all of that. It's better than the poster that they first put out for the attraction. Well, after the hurricane didn't <laughs> actually <laughs> do so well. So that right there is a lot. Well, they'll put it back with a, a tagline that says the ride that will blow you away. It's so wonderful. <laughs> um, it'll, it'll shatter to fantastic. tatters all of your... Previous expectations for a great theme park ride, right? 
<laughs> exactly. That was a highlight from our live stream on That Park Place Podcast it's online, where the full stream can be found at the link in the description. But what about you? What were your thoughts on this particular story? Please let us know in the comments below. Like this video if you did like this video. Share us out as it helps us out tremendously against the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much for watching. T3, B.O. Please comment, like, and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to That Park Place Podcasts Online, your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro, The Pro Show, and That Park Place for all the news that should be fun.